Okay, welcome back. I have a big update today. Uh, I want to show you around a new script that I have added. It's called Bullet Stats, and it's this guy down here. And I've added it to Bullet 1, Bullet 2, Bullet Ion, and Bullet Laser. You can tell here that it is going to hold the damage and the bullet type information and it basically looks like this. Declare damage and bullet type and that's it. So I am going to send it information from the ship script every time a bullet is fired. So we'll take a look at that. And I have modified all of the these other scripts, the bullet one, bullet two, bullet ion, bullet laser, taken some information out of there and sent it over to the enemies. So let's take a look at what's going on. Bullet one now in the on trigger enter is only going to uh, look for an enemy collision and then destroy itself. Same goes for bullet two except for its durable capabilities. The bullet ion, same thing, will destroy itself. And the bullet laser, sort of the same. If it runs into an enemy, the laser will be destroyed. If it runs into an enemy bullet, it will destroy the bullet. So let's check out um, how this ship sends all this information to bullet stats. So the reason why I am doing it this way, uh, you'll see it on the screen here, is so that I can have one command um, that I can use in many places. And then I, uh, I'll explain it as we go here. So here's the ship script. This is the code that fires bullets. And inside the switch for bullet type, we have all the cases as before. And I've added a couple lines to each case. So for case 0, I'm just going to instantiate the bullet, projectile 1, and that's the clone. So then I say, uh, this this has been in another video, so clone.get component bullet1.speed. This is the variable in the bullet1 script, and I set it equal, equal to bullet speed bullet type. Now I'm going to do something similar, but you'll see this is the code that gets repeated. It makes life simple. Clone.get component bullet stats. Um, the damage gets set and the bullet type gets set. So this is where it happens. Um, case 1, this is for the durable bullet. So it gets uh, the durable value <clears throat> in bullet 2 and then the damage in bullet type. Same thing for the ion bullets here and same thing for the laser here. So every time you shoot the bullet gets some information and then the bullets go and collide with something and get destroyed and now the enemy units are going to control what happens to themselves instead of the bullets um, describing what happens and destroying other game objects and stuff like that. So the enemy drone um, is kind of a wimpy guy. So what's going to happen to him is if he runs into the player, uh, the drone will be destroyed. And I have a note to myself here, something happens to the ship, and I'm going to have that handled in the ship script. Right now he just loses 5 health. So the drone will be destroyed and an explosion will be instantiated. Now if the drone runs into a player bullet, I'm going to check the bullet type in a switch. So again, I'm just using the bullet stats and it's going to be this name, bullet stats, no matter which enemy it's on. So that's going to save me a lot of um, typing, a lot of code so I can keep it simple. Now here's something interesting with this switch statement. If you are not familiar with the nitty-gritty for how these work, it basically starts at the first case and um, 
If it does not match this case, it moves on until it finds the case that, um, for example, this bullet type, then it enters the switch statement at that point, executes all the code going down until it sees a break. So, for example, if we have the basic weapon or the durable bullet or the laser, then the, um, the switch gets entered at this position only calculates a reduction of enemy current life by the amount in bullet stats um, dot damage. However, if the ion bullet um, collides with the drone, then it's going to slow down the, uh, the enemy. So it's going to reduce it to 70% at speed. And it's going to continue down here, and it's going to do damage. So let's go over to the enemy mine and see what happens here. If the mine strikes the player, then something happens to the ship. The mine is destroyed. An explosion is instantiated. And here I have something different than for the uh, last enemy. The basic bullet is not going to do any damage to the mine. The ion, I haven't coded this yet, but it's going to do something to the mine. I would like it to somehow be disabled for a short period. Uh, maybe I can remove the collider for a few seconds and then um, put it back on again. And then uh, notice there are no breaks in the switch statement here. So all of these weapons are going to reduce the enemy current life. And then it hits a, hits a break and gets out. So then the enemy tower, something different yet again. Um, uh, again, the, the player, the ship will handle whatever happens when they collide. So the player bullet. Um, if the basic weapon hits the tower, then I am going to do some damage, but it's going to be heavily reduced. So right here I have it doing 20% of its normal damage, just to be different. And then there's a break. And then down here, if the ion hits, then the weight shoot for the tower gets incremented by a full second. So what that uh, basically does is it makes the tower have to wait longer and longer until it can shoot its um, next bullet. So if you hit it a whole bunch of times in a row, this all stacks up. And then there's no break here for case two. So it comes down here and does some damage, full damage for the laser and the durable and the ion. So I have now implemented um, hit points into arc shoot for all of the enemies. And basically, um, this is really just simple for now, but I have these variables for current life and max life, and I um, initialize them to the game time, however long the game has been running. So I'm going to show you this now. Um, now this only happens in the start function, so whenever an enemy is instantiated, then it finds out how many hit points it has according to the time. And I'll definitely change this later. So let's check what the game looks like. See some messages down there. And we'll check out all of the weapons and all of the enemies. So these guys are wimpy right now. Tower can also be destroyed. This weapon cannot destroy the mines should take a little longer to destroy the tower and pretty soon my single shots won't be enough to destroy the drones like that. Okay, so I'm missing some of these guys now. So you see that effect? Longer to kill the tower. Alright, I'm going to switch weapons to durable. is a lot better when they come down from the top of the screen. Anyway, that does full damage. Okay, Durable can destroy a mine. If 
follow these guys around. I'll eventually get them. Okay. Now the ion, number three, slows down these guys. So they'll never actually hit zero, but for all intents and purposes, that's a zero. Alright, so that guy, the tower is going to be slowed down, so this guy's not going to shoot anymore if I keep on shooting him. And the laser. So now the laser does not automatically kill all these bad guys, but it, it takes um, some time to do that. So you saw that I just got back some of my battery pack by hitting S on the keyboard. That is every five seconds I can do that. That's still in the code. All right, so I've gone through all of the weapons, all of the enemies. Some can be destroyed, some cannot. This poor drone over here is still just hanging on. If I were to shoot it with uh, like a stock bullet, he'll eventually die. There he goes. All right, so these guys have tons of hit points now. It's going to be really hard to kill them all. And there we have it. This for sure is going to take forever to kill.